see. All right, there we go. Should be able to hear me now a lot better if there was an issue before. All right. Whitney, what's up, sis? How you doing? How you been? Glad to see you stop by. Appreciate it. Talking and grubbing. What's up, brother? Whitney, not getting any audio. How about now? Is it any audio? Same this microphone uh, wasn't working right. All right. How about now? Um, I, I changed the microphone source. So, and I should have probably had to try to troubleshoot that a little sooner, but um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, one of the things I got to do a story about for my podcast is that Starbucks changed their mind, of course, and now it's going to allow people to support the Black Lives Matter movement and wear things that endorse it. Whereas before they were saying they wasn't going to have anything to do with that. Um, it seems right now it's a lot of momentum it going in the right direction. Sort of similar to how that Me Too movement momentum was picking up. Except this, you know, is for an even bigger cause. Um, affects a lot more people. Does a lot more damage. Not that that didn't have its problems too and did its damage, but this is a whole lot more than just a few people that was dealing in Hollywood or, you know, in places, positions for jobs, whatever the case. All right. Yeah, you can hear me now. Okay. Can you hear me now? I feel like a, a Sprint commercial. Can you, can you hear me now? <laughs> Whitney, can you hear me? Is you still there? What's up? Uh, anyway. It seemed like tonight is going to be the season finale of Insecure. Now, with the season finale of Insecure, those of you watching, um, if you remember the last episode, Molly got busted being a fake friend. <laughs> and then said something shady like, well, maybe we ain't on the same paths no more. So, like, and then when Issa said, okay, she got the nerve to be, like, shocked or mad. You the one said it. So, I don't know. I think uh, it would be good to see a fight. <laughs> but uh, that, ain't, that ain't consistent with the way the show goes. What's up, Malik the King? What's up, brother? Appreciate your comments and stuff on the videos. Rashonda, what's up, sis? How you doing? Glad you stopped by. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, but uh, I think that, um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Are they going to try to be friends again? Or should they just go their separate ways? I mean, really, at this point, it's no need for them to be friends, really. Um, they got nothing in common. And Molly has decided to dedicate her life to her man. And... She did that kind of unilaterally, didn't even talk to her girl about it or nothing. So, in the end, hopefully that works out with her and uh, her man. Because if it don't, she going to be wanting to cry on the shoulder of her best friend. And she ain't going to have one. So, I don't know. Fudgy Babe, what's up, sis? How you doing? Thank you for coming by. Love you. Appreciate it. Um... I've been researching other streaming software and different stuff, and uh, I found something else to use other than what I've been using, but I'm not really a computer guy, so every time I start to do something else or find something else, it's like I got to kind of relearn it and go through it and stuff, so it just takes a little learning curve for me to teach myself how to use some of this stuff and do it, and so uh, with that being said, hopefully by next week. I should be using that and it looks pretty cool I'll be able to have features on there when people say a comment or a new subscriber or anything I can do all type of animations and things so it looks pretty interesting and I'm working on that and hopefully I can get that together and up and running by next week episode and also I set it up with the podcast so that when you guys listen to the podcast, please subscribe to the podcast because I'm going to start going live 
with the podcast and when I go live you all can call in and talk to me live like a radio show do call ins you can send in text messages or whatever the case and so uh, I'm looking to try to help uh, expand that and uh, maybe start to tie in my website and put more of the podcast there and then with that I have a lot more freedom than what I have on YouTube now yeah it's not visually as entertaining as maybe a video but I don't make them that long either so I try to just keep it real, get to the point, and move on. So, subscribe to the podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, I did invest a little bit because it costs a little money to get that started. And monthly money per month, it's not a lot. But, you know, I feel it's a good way for me to get a lot of stuff out for people. So, keep in mind, stay tuned for that. Um, support gaming you say I'm the only one that hasn't watched this show <laughs> well what you waiting on man it actually got a lot of drama one thing I do I can't show is they do have a lot of sex scenes man so I don't know maybe that might get you interested man <laughs> you got a lot of a lot of good-looking women in that show but uh, no it's a good show because it shows a different side of you know young black people coming up they ain't all gangbangers or thugs these young professionals they not rich or not poor they trying to make it and it showed just some real struggles and different things with they have with friends and lovers and it's really based off of people's insecurities really whether they insecure of themselves or where they stand or what other people or whatever and the dumb things and decisions people do based on that when if you really keep it real and talk and have a real relationship a lot of this stuff could be avoided but then it wouldn't be a show but it's interesting it's cool and uh you know it's only a 30 minute show so that's kind of a bad side with it because sometimes it is getting really good and interesting and then it's over and you're like dang <laughs> It's just getting good, and now it's over. It didn't really have have much. They have one episode can really focus on one character at a time, kind of. Um, but anyway, it's on the fourth season, so they've had time to develop the relationships and the characters and things. So, you know, it's not that bad. It's a different change of pace. Ain't nobody fighting or shooting or drug dealing or cussing and all kind of stuff. It's just some kind of everyday little drama we all have gone through at one point in time or another so Edmund Dantes what's up man what's up Jay this Fahim how you been bro oh what's up Fahim you just switched up changed names man you in the witness protection you you got Larry the cable guy well, well I got you in the witness protection we gonna take care of you Larry the cable guy hey <laughs> what's up man how you doing Ben Richardson, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Sweet Brown Sugar, what's up? The show we talking about is Insecure on HBO. Insecure. And another thing, what I'm going to plan on doing, and it's time consuming, but what I want to do with my podcast is try to do a review on every movie or show that I've seen. Sort of like the Black Cisco and Ebert. <laughs> And, uh, you know, then I have a library of different stuff. And if you want to hear what I think of whatever movie or take, you could just go there and see if I've reviewed it. And boom, there you go. So I think I'm going to do that. And, uh, you know, we'll see. So be looking for all kind of random movies and show reviews coming soon. Because I'm going to just try to crank them out and build up a catalog that way. Um, this one movie that I just saw this weekend, yesterday, and I never even heard of this movie. It came out last year. It's called Ready or Not. And, uh, I don't know if you all have heard of Ready or Not, but it is really, it was really good. It was a new script. I never heard of this type of, you know, movie before. Um, it said it was so this woman was marrying this dude into a rich family. And then on the wedding night, the tradition is whenever somebody new joins the family, 
then they all have to play a game. And it's like a random game that is picked out of this box. And if they get this one card, then the object was that they had to kill them. And uh, the card was hide and seek. And of course, she picked hide and seek. And then, you know, it just gets kind of deep from there. And then it's got a little humor in it, but it's serious. But then it also shows a little, uh, what you could say, uh, Illuminati cult ritualistic type stuff involved and uh it was pretty interesting pretty good and uh, it was worth the watch it was some fresh uh different script you know edmund dantes <laughs> hey man ghost gave me a fake id and forced me to join holly oh no man he just sent you up up the river man <laughs> yeah you're gonna have uh angie looking for you <laughs> what you doing fucking what you doing, my fahin? He was here, you put it away, yos. You put the fahin away, you make him go bye bye. I don't want, I want my fahin back. You don't do that, yos. <laughs> A little Angie for you, man. Sweet brown sugar. Oh, okay, I haven't watched that one yet. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mellow fellow, I like the podcast, J Mo, variety of stuff. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. It'll give me a chance to speak on more things than, uh, what uh what i can do on youtube pretty much and uh you know i do have more stuff to say even though it seems people only want to hear me talk about power and don't care about nothing else but you know whatever i still got you guys to still come through support and i appreciate it and that's why i want to try to do a little more and you know try to debunk the fake news and put out the real stuff and talk about the stuff that affects us all and even though i do it they allow me to post it on on uh youtube but they whole way of doing things is separate from youtube so that's why i say make sure everybody download my podcast and uh the more that i get on there then i'm gonna upload it to itunes so We'll see. Something new. Try to make it happen. I know with y'all support, uh, anything possible. So, sweet brown sugar, like like your, what happened with uh, with Ghost got you for the okie doke, man. Talking and grubbing. You heard of that movie? Yeah, man. It was good, man. It was just came on cable uh, this weekend. I saw it, and man, I was surprised. Uh, Dantes, Jay, I've been seeing Courtney Kemp talking to people, questioning that bogus ending the power. <laughs> Mark my words, Raising Canaan will be the only spinoff to do Miley Well, I believe you too, because that's the only one I want to see, really. And Tommy, <laughs> other than that, I watch the other stuff and do that because, you know, this is my job. But as far as a fan, I could care less what happened with Tariq. But, you know, we'll see talking and grubbing props to you on the podcast jay is pretty good well thanks man i appreciate it brother i'm trying to do a little something expand expand my horizons trying to create a multimedia empire like joe rogan be like jay rogan <laughs> uh support gaming notice no news on book three has surfaced just book book three i think courtney knows she meant all oh, just book two yeah oh well i mean what she really need to do is come up with a fresh ass idea i mean why you gotta make books all these books are the same idea you're gonna milk that cow until it turned to dust <laughs> they were having powder milk coming out of them nipples the way they about to milk that cow uh you know come up with a different idea Come up with different shows instead of trying to spin off. I ain't never seen nobody make five spinoffs off of one show. Three, four spinoffs off of what the hell is this? So, you know, I don't understand it. They talking about we doing something never been done before on TV. It's the reason why it ain't never been done. Don't make no sense. And you get viewer fatigue. And everybody ain't in love with how they ended it. So that right there alienated your viewers should be lucky if they even get to put book three on tv because if book two does really bad they probably will cancel all them other books 
Cancel the subscription. We don't want no books. <laughs> Talking to Grub, but I got to give Issa Rae her props. She didn't go to Hollywood. She made Hollywood come to her. I feel that Insecure is a web show on cable. It is a web show on cable. And she did her thing through YouTube, which has a lot of power. You build up your steady fan base. People get to see your work. And you can make things happen. And she did her videos and stuff on YouTube. And that's how she ended up getting in there in Hollywood. And she ain't looked back. And I like, I'm proud of her. And she she did good. And that's a good example. And a lot of people are starting to do that with YouTube. Just like Joe Rogan signed a $100 million deal with his podcast from YouTube and stuff. So what I'm planning on doing is when I start doing my podcast, I'm going to start filming myself and then you can see me doing it and it'll be on the radio too, just like how everybody else do it basically. So I'm pretty much working on getting my setup together and then I'll be able to film the podcast and then you'll see it and then at the same time it'll be recorded and so then you'll have both. Let's see. Talking and grubbing. The only power spinoffs I want to see is the last three books. Man, I feel you. I don't even remember what the all three of them is. Raising Canaan, Tommy. What? Councilman Tank? I don't know how that's going to work without Ghost in it. He ain't going to be ki killing people. I, I don't know. He's a good actor and he could hold the show on his own. But they missing the main ingredient to the dinner. Should have paid the man more. Did whatever he needed to bring him back. That's what you do. You want to make all these spinoffs and make all this money. Then you're going to have to kiss some booty. Okay. He didn't show that booty enough on the show. So they shouldn't have had a problem puckering up. Kiss that booty and get that man on duty. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Sweet brown sugar. Courtney said on the live, there's only two days of filming left. She also said she tried to get the network to release the show, but they declined until the filming is done. Well, I mean, that's smart because, like, Empire released the show, filming wasn't done, and now it's incomplete. Now, I've heard people say and that it's supposed to come back and they're going to finish it, but I'm sure Stars probably doesn't want to get in that situation. They got a half release project hanging in the wind on TV so I can understand that talking and grubbing at support I think they were about to start book three before the before the you know what happened so that I think that is true they was about to start filming that and book two was almost done <laughs> so yeah we'll see what happened I don't know how they're going to release all these back to back to back. So what? We'll never go off, basically. Because when one season is off, then the next book come on. Then that's over. Then the next book come on. Then by the time that's over, we back to the other book, book two again. And then we could do it that way. And we'll just have power running nonstop on TV. That's what they plan on doing. <laughs> I hope they don't wear people out. And support gaming theory. Ghost has been in a coma since the ending of season five, episode ten, when Tommy shot Angie. He also hit Ghost. Angie died, but Ghost is in a coma and he's dreaming about his fear of Tariq becoming him. That's the best thing I've heard as far as trying to save the show. If they want to pay him and he decide to come back, then that's what they need to do. And he been in a coma dreaming fighting for his life and when he get out he a changed man for real I mean that's the only thing I can think of that's a good idea I don't think they thought of that I don't think that's what they're doing but I think you got a good idea Edmund Dantes I used to watch Issa Rae YouTube show Rumi love a friend huh See, I never heard of her until she had the show Insecure, but then I heard that she was doing that, and I did look it up and saw that she has a lot of stuff on YouTube, um, but I never really watched it. They're a lot of short videos, but, you know, I saw that she had, like, at the time, like a half a million subscribers, so, you know, she wasn't the biggest, but she wasn't small. She was doing good. 
talking. But see, another thing is location. Living in California, you got access a lot easier to a lot of people that are doing things. And you got a lot of access to people and actors and talent. It's a lot of talent and stuff all over the place for all kinds of areas of the industry. From film, production, editing, on screen, off screen. And so, you know, that's one reason I was thinking of moving to California. And I might move to Chicago again and do something else. So we'll see. Um, talking and grubbing. Instead of Courtney Kemp doing these books, she should have just stuck with power and left it alone. Damn right. The only reason she separated it into books is because Ghost is gone. And everybody gonna know that the show is different. But yeah, that's all it really is. Fudgy Babe, thanks Jay for enlightening the news on the NASCAR thing. Oh, no problem. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna try to do more of is try to break more of those stories and different stuff. And, uh, you know, expose people like that for what they are. And companies or whatever and it gave me a lot more flexibility than what I have on YouTube I'm glad you uh, liked it uh, fudgy babe druggy Isaiah time he spent off make no sense no nah, I don't I mean that's just only cuz he still gonna be on the show so what we just gonna see what he does in California or something I mean it's crazy sweet brown sugar I still think they will have to run behind Omari to come back and save the series. They were smart to end it the way they did. What you mean they were smart to end it the way they did? You got to explain that one to me. But I do agree they are going to have to come running behind him to save it. Because the I don't like to talk about people doing their craft or working. Because it does take a lot of work to do that and when I do talk on the videos or whatever I'm just playing and jokes I'm not you know trying to bring nobody down or nothing like that but uh you know the truth is it's not a real draw on the show it's just not the 50 cent story and stuff people want to see the Raising Canaan because it's going to go to the characters we all know and we get to see the younger side of them so we already familiar with you know, Ghost, Tommy, and Kanan is just, they're younger. So we kind of know that story. But other than that, and Tommy, everybody familiar, got a love hate relationship with Tommy. But other than that, it's not a big draw. I don't, even Team Tasha, I don't think would just come to watch a Tasha show. <laughs> I mean, and Tariq, he's a good young actor. He's made a lot of progress and he's done a lot of stuff at a young age and I give him a lot of credit credit <laughs> credit <laughs> credit and props on doing that but he's not there yet he's still not there yet to bring us me there every week to see what he got going on so I don't know Louisiana Boy James, I prefer Tommy spinoff. It will probably be better than the other sequels. And that's probably because you like action movies like I do. And you know, Tommy's a goon and he's going to be getting into trouble, shooting, fighting, drugged out, booger sugar surprise. And it will be interesting and good TV, entertaining. But in reality, you know, he, he not the same without ghosts either. But I would like to see that too because at least it would be a lot of action and stuff. For Tariq, every time you see him getting in and stuff, you would be thinking about how dumb he is or that was stupid or whatever. <laughs> uh, let's see. Talking and grubbing that support. That would be some Dan Connor stuff if they did that with Ghost. <laughs> Talk about bringing him back from Roseanne or something. Druggy Isaiah Issa Rae had a show called Awkward Black Girl, huh? Support gaming, it it would fix the mess of season six and the ending. Yeah, I know that's right. Louisiana boy, Ghost was a good guy. Period. He was. They painted him to be a bad guy in the final season, but other than that, he the only one that was looking out for everybody else always. He the only one putting his life on the line and freedom to try to get everybody else in jail. One example is him trying to sneak in and get that tape for Tommy, uh, so Tommy didn't get caught up. And he the only one that was trying to get out the life and do better. Everybody else was just acting a fool. 
He the only one when it was time for somebody to kill, he want to get some more information. He want to wait. He got to think about it. Like with Roller. If it wasn't for Tommy messing up and putting all that pressure on him, he wouldn't have did it. Ghost was a good guy in a bad world. And he was trying to get out of the world while everybody else was trying to embrace it and stay. <sighs> Crazy. Druggy Isaiah Tommy was already a prominent main character. How does he get a spinoff? Because <laughs> they desperate to keep that money train going. I mean, it, it, it support. He wondering what you mean. It makes no sense. In a way, it makes no sense. But in a way, it does. Like, I can see what you mean by it make no sense. Like, he already a main character how does he get a spinoff he, but in a way like you would say like what he already the star of the show or something like why is he getting a spinoff he should just carry the show just stay on the main show which would make more sense in a way but they want to just separate him so I don't know that that doesn't make sense the whole situation is confusing <laughs> Sweet brown sugar. The ending was whack. Totally effed up because of what they can they can slip him back in. But I'm still mad though. Ghost was power. Oh yeah. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah, it was whack. They messed it up. So yeah, we'll see if they learn from the error of their ways. They kind of don't appreciate some of the stuff fans say. I mean, you can't listen to what everything people tell you. But I mean, when it's something like this, they are the ones paying the bills. They stop watching. You don't have a show. You know. Support gaming. Oh, okay, you said it. Jackie Field. Hey, what's up, Jack? How you doing, sis? Kev, which spinoff you looking forward to do the most? Mine's is Razor Kane. Yeah, that's the same for me. That's going to be the most interesting um, because we already know the characters. and It'll be interesting to see how they became who they became and what they went through. Um... Tommy's would be next and I really ain't interested in the rest I mean Councilman Taint I guess but I don't know enough about it yet so I don't know Dantes I really ain't even interested in Kane and Simple Minded Ass the only plot lines that the originals want to see is what happened with Ghost Dad and Breeze and how Ghost came to be a mastermind yeah that's true like Kane and Mindset was probably above average for teenagers but as they evolved he still remained there and then he became simple minded because you are right he was still trying to steal TVs with Tariq like what the hell what you going to pawn shops with TV hey man let me get a hundred bucks man hey, hey, hey. I'm Kanan man I got two TVs how much I get that was stupid druggy Isaiah Support game and power was already oversaturated on power. How do you give a main character a spinoff? Yeah, that's what I was thinking you might have been talking about. Sweet Brown Sugar. Omari Ghost carried that show, and it is, and it has, will show. I don't get the has, will show part, but you're right. He did carry that show. He really did. And I don't think they truly understood how much he would meant to that show and to the fans. I really don't. He really built a huge fan base. <laughs> Guys and girls. Guys think he smooth, calculated, you know, women like him for other reasons. <laughs> and they just, I don't know. Ben Richardson raising Canaan should have been the next show up after the power debacle we all needed a break in a fresh series if the yeah that makes sense and people was already knew who those characters was too but support gaming if the intention of the writers was to make ghost the bad guy they should have set it up after Raina's death and made him snap oh that's a great great point that would have been perfect that would have been the perfect point to do it too because everybody would have understood and knew why and could go along with that. They just made him do that because what? He about to run into politics? 
Fudgy Babe, thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Thank you. You guys have really been helpful helping me to maintain my channel and improve and and keep growing as a you know content creator and especially during these times when it's not much content to really talk about and do things um and then with the problems i got with Lionsgate, um you guys have really been helping me to stay in business really so i appreciate all the support thank you every little bit helps um let's see Edmund Dante is remember Angie told Ghost he didn't belong in the hood. Right, that's true. And he didn't. And even when he was talking to Canaan, the ghost Canaan, and he was like, Canaan talking about you just like me. He like, no, nah, this is the real me. I just took a longer route to get here, but I would have been here no matter what. And that's true. He was just using the streets as a means to an end. Whereas everybody else loved it and that was just their life. He was using that as a tool to get ahead talking and, gr and grubbing Courtney Courtney Krause trying to prove that power can win without Omari she tried to pull the last dance move break up the dynasty <laughs> that was good I like that uh, Dante as he was a shapeshifter that survived his environment right and he was adaptive yeah calculated Druggy Isaiah, Ghost is the good and bad guy. There's no way Ghost isn't a bad guy on at least a surface level considering his profession. That's true. That's true. He was a good guy in a bad world and he had to get his hands dirty, but he didn't enjoy it, which is the thing. Whereas Tommy or even Tasha didn't care. You know, they they looked at it, oh well just kill Kane and I told you you should have killed him. Whereas he would always try to find ways not to kill somebody if he could. Everybody else just looked at it as it was like taking out the garbage or something. Um, support gaming. Book 3 and 2 should have been switched to, to be honest, book 2 could have just been Power Season 7. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. I guess they just didn't want the numbers to be like season up to Season 12 or something. So they just started it over. I'm guessing. Uh, Louisiana boy, these people like Tasha, Tariq, Tommy, Keisha treated ghosts so bad. Wait, these people like Tasha, Tariq, Tommy, and Keisha treated ghosts so bad after all the good things he had done when they were still being. You right. He even tried to give Keisha the check and get her out of the life. Did the same for Holly. Tried to do stuff for Tommy. None of them appreciated it. Now after he gone, they all off doing worse. Kev, nah, Kanan thought Ghost and Tommy the game. He taught Ghost and Tommy the game, and I was smart at Ghost multiple times from far simple mind. Well, he didn't really outsmart Ghost. He was able to do things because Ghost didn't know he was out, or Ghost didn't know he was the one doing it. So when he was able to operate in the shadows and be sneaky, he was able to do stuff because Ghost didn't know that he knew about the call to get them in jail and all of that. But once Ghost knew that Kanan was coming for him, Kanan wasn't able to really get him no more. So it was only able when Ghost thought that they were still cool that he was able to get him. But I feel what you're saying though. Uh... Talking and grubbing, and Omari wore some of the baddest suits on the show. Yeah, you ain't lying. I saw in this one interview, he was talking about he wished he could have kept them. <laughs> but, you know, all that stuff would have probably been a hundred grand. All those Tom Ford suits and different stuff. You know, I mean, he could have paid for it, but he probably wanted his checks. <laughs> Plus... Whenever you see Omari, he ain't a suit and tie kind of guy. Which, if I was him, that would become my look. Because it was a good look for him. Every time I see him, he wearing some jeans or this or that. And sleeves roll up or whatever. I mean, he just... He not doing... He didn't take that persona serious into his life. Which is fine. But, if he always stayed G'd up. That might get him different parts, roles, looked at differently. He may be the 
gangster bad guy or good guy in the, in movies coming up for decades, but who knows? Sweet brown sugar, it has been proven, and the rest will really see with a season without him. Yeah, you're right. Druggy Isaiah, you guys like Omari the actor more than Ghost the character. Ah, uh, not necessarily. I did like Next Day Air, but Omari the Hardwick, I mean, ain't no wrong with him. You're all right, but not necessarily don't really know him follow him like that um no problem fudgy babe dante as you like that Krauss metaphor that is a good one <laughs> that's a real good one sweet brown sugar on the real this is an example of what happens when we give up power by going public for the for the money then you have to get approval from a board versus doing it your own creative way yeah that's true that's true. That's why a lot of people, they want to maintain ownership of their stuff. But then they may not get the views or whatever. Like Issa Rae, I think she maintained her stuff. Um, so, it's a lot of different ways, avenues to do things. Um, Joe Rogan was able to do that in a way. Get paid for it, but you know. It's difficult out here. It's it's getting easier to put your stuff out for people to see without the big studios or big money behind it. But you still don't get the real exposure or the good good stuff without that that machine, that industry. I know if I had that type of support behind me and no telling what I could be doing. Um, so, but when it comes down to me having to do every job, it. <laughs> <laughs> and my, then I don't have a computer background or know what I don't even know what I'm missing sometimes I have to learn everything from scratch I mean I've taught myself a lot since I've started and came a long way but I know by how much that I've learned that I know for a fact I, I don't really know hardly nothing it's a whole lot more to know uh, let's see Support gaming. What if ghost a metaphor for drug or maybe smoking addiction? Tommy. Smoking addiction. Tommy, Tariq, and Tasha are the abusers. They can't go a few seconds without them. <laughs> you working on metaphors? <laughs> uh, we'll see. I know they're going to have a harder time without them. That's for sure. Druggy Isaiah, yeah, plus Kev, Kev 11, Ghost used Tommy to outsmart Kanan and flip Dre against him because Tariq is a miniature ghost. Ghost was basically an, an illusionist or magician. <laughs> Y'all working on these metaphors now. See what you started talking and grubbing? <laughs> ghost was an illusionist or magician. Okay. I don't know about that much. Ghost didn't make Tariq like that, though. A combination of Kanan and Tasha did. But we getting down to the last quarter of the show. You all want to do Zoom? I can set up the Zoom. And uh, if you all want to get on and say some stuff, then uh, we can make it happen. Y'all can hop on for a minute or two. Give a little shout out. Say what up, what's up, what you trying to do, and uh, you know, we'll take it from there. Let's see. Hold on, let me set it up. just posted the link if you all want to join me on zoom um, you can hop on and uh, you can give a shout out let me 
see. Say Dante is druggy. Nah, I definitely did the dig the ghost character a bit more than Omari. Omari doesn't seem to be as swaggered out as Ghost. Omari actually seems sort of awkward to me. I kind of can see where you're coming from with that. He does seem to be off and something. I mean, he seemed kind of an eccentric guy. He got some type of poetry thing he do and all kind of stuff. Yeah, he's he's nothing like the real Ghost. Fudgy Babe, Jay, who else you think would make a good ghost, or is Mari the only fit? Well, they could use some good people, but you can't just put somebody else into that same role with that name. I'd have to think about some good people to put in there. They could have used Lorenz Tate, actually, if he wasn't already Councilman Tate. Druggy ghost is God and the three T's are D oh my goodness. Come on now. <laughs> Let's see, talking and grubbing. I blame Tasha more than Kanan for messing up Tariq. Yeah. I mean they he started it and she finished it. <laughs> and it was over for him after that. Whitney, what's up, sis? Thank you so so much. Uh, with the huge support uh, I love you for that sis you've been amazing these last couple weeks for me I really really appreciate it um, really goes further than uh, you guys probably realize so I really appreciate you know all the support um, really do thanks thank you so much when you gonna get on zoom or you busy you don't feel like it I understand I still, still love you. Still appreciate you, Louisiana boy. They should have kept Benny. He would have made, he would have made to be one sick character if he had his own series. The way that he went out, yeah, that was garbage. They could have put him in Tommy series and have him trying to track Tommy down all over the place. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Druggy Isaiah Tasha. Encouraged Tariq to reconcile with his father. Told him not to choose sides between Ghost and Tommy. Man, by the time she said that, the damage was done. It was over. <laughs> that was that was a waste of words from, from her then. Fudgy Babe, Ben, if Wesley was younger, he would do, I think. Yeah, Wesley was dope in uh, Sugar Hill. And, of course, everybody know New Jack City. But yeah, Wesley is a good good idea. Yeah, he's a little older now though, so yeah. But yeah, Wes was 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 the man at one point. He did a damn good role in Sugar Hill. That's a movie a lot of people slept on. But you know, Ben Richardson, they might make something out of Tariq. Nah, he's a punk. <laughs> That's funny. Nah, uh, I think he needs to at least be around twenty three. 25 I think he could have held it down by the end it would have been a little little different look I wouldn't be looking at him as a kid but Kev Natasha way more to blame she know Tariq ain't gangster still try to put him in the drug game and almost got him killed with setting up Canaan yeah I know and got him selling drugs at his school to the teacher stupid Sweet Brown, yeah, they effed over Cousin Benny, big time, man. He a good actor. I see him in all kind of stuff now. Whitney, my phone had died. Had to wait for it to charge back up. Okay, I, I understand. Appreciate it. Let's see. Talking and grubbing. You can't replace Omari as Ghost because we're always going to see him as that character. Like you can't replace Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal. Yeah, that's true. That's why I say you can bring somebody else, but... It can't be called Ghost. <laughs> ben Richardson. Yeah, his actors at Fudge, his acting skills are above average. It would have worked. Yeah, yeah, I like Wesley. He kind of been not as busy lately in acting. But, yeah, Wes was the man. Druggy Tariq was going to trap regardless. Tasha just gave him guidance. I don't know about that. If he never got with Kanan and Kanan taking him over there and doing this and that, 
he was never gonna trap because how was he gonna he didn't know nothing and nobody taught him he didn't have no connects he didn't know where to go he didn't know nothing so that's why I say Kanan messed him up and then Tasha finished him so you know Ben what's up brother thank you man I appreciate it thank you so much for the uh, support on the uh, super chat man I really appreciate that man um, like I say man you guys really been helpful and supportive and uh, you know it's things like this that make me even when I'm tired or sore or don't feel like it still try to push and and do something you know put something out for everybody um, so I really appreciate it man you guys man you guys really have been helpful and I really, you know, thankful. Um, let's see. Support. Tariq is a version of Ghost that never had to struggle with anything in life. Ghost actually struggled through life to get where he is. And Tariq had it all from day one. He going backwards. Man, that's an uh, excellent, excellent analogy. He is hustling backwards. He already had the money. He already had everything. Like, he trying to sell dope to make money that he already had. To buy shoes he could have just got anyway. Yeah, he is hustling backwards. You're right. Now he don't have nothing and he messed up everything. And now he need to do something. He don't got no dad, no mom, no money. Nothing. But, yeah, he was hustling backwards. That's perfect. It's a perfect way to put that support. Edmund Dantes, yeah, it's pretty much a rap for anybody else playing Ghost. That's like saying who else could do voiceover for Darth Vader. But James Earl Jones. I am James Earl Jones. Welcome, Skywalker. <laughs> James Earl Jones. That's my James Earl Jones. Uh, how that sound? James Earl Jones. <laughs> Whitney, Big Nino, Ben, what's up, talking and grubbing, yeah, that was Tasha's biggest mistake, Dantes, remember I said Ghost was a mixture of Romello and Court. you did say that, you did, that's a good call, man, that's a great, that's a great analogy right there, yep, because even though Romello was a bad dude in a bad world, he was trying to do good, trying to get out, trying to help, <sighs> A, ma a angel amongst devils. <laughs> yeah. Sweet brown sugar. Hell, it's Tasha fault. He got caught up with Canaan. Now, that's true. That is definitely true. And she wasn't watching nothing. But it really all come down to Dre punking out, too. Because Dre was scared. If he would have told Ghost... Canaan out of jail, he just came up to the gym, this, that, and the other from jump. A lot could have been avoided. Tariq wouldn't have got into trouble he was in. He wouldn't have been hanging out with Canaan, calling him slim at the apartment. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get a little wee-wee wet with old girl, you know what I'm saying? Coming, doing whatever he trying to do, trying to be grown. And yeah, that would have been avoided. So Dre, so many people dropped the ball in that situation. But yeah, I agree. Druggy, Tariq was destined for the streets, kinda. I don't know about that. Look at season one. He was a little nerd, preppy, pretty boy. He wasn't thinking nothing about the streets. Nothing at all. Re look at the first episode or the second one and he playing Call of Duty with Tommy. Ghost didn't even let him play those games. He like, you know you ain't supposed to be playing them games. Like they had him overprotective. He wasn't playing violent video games. He had doing his homework and doing little projects with Sean and man, he didn't know nothing about that. And he was so green. I mean, they try to make it like when Sean died, that started to make him start to wonder about the streets or this or that. And then, you know, when 
Caden came up as slim and this and that and that, but he made a big jump from in the penthouse to the pole house. <laughs> uh, you know. So, yeah, I forgot who said it, but he was straight hustling backwards. I think support said that, but that was perfect. All right, y'all, I guess nobody wanted to hop on on Zoom. That's okay. My feelings ain't hurt. <laughs> and it's another thing that I want you all to check out. And uh, I don't know. Maybe we can all play a game, make game night. Uh, like maybe every Wednesday night or something, have a game night. And it's another app that I found where people can join and we can play against each other. But we still see each other's face and we can talk and do stuff. Um, I haven't really played it yet myself. So, you know, we can all get in. I'm looking for it now. And... Uh, they have something a little interesting and also another idea of what I'm thinking about doing is with my podcast I'm thinking about doing like midnight shows or you know one two in the morning podcast I know a lot of people are up late at night I'm a light I mean a night owl for those that know I'm always up at two three in the morning and I think that Maybe I might do a radio show or something at that time and, you know, talk to people at night that is up insomniacs like me. <laughs> um, I'm not always able to do it, so that's why I think I might do it like maybe once a week or something. Try and uh, we'll see how that go. Um, let me see. What's the name of that game again? thought I had it saved there and then I'm looking it ain't there uh, well I have to find it and then post it on uh, on my what you call it podcast yeah cause I don't know where it is now I had it saved uh, and of course when it's time for me to tell peop people, excuse me, I don't know where it is, but I find it, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens if people want to play, talk, whatever. Um, this little options try to build the community together, bring people together. So we'll see. I'm um, getting down to the last 10 minutes of the show. I'm going to try to get to all the last comments, see what's up. Anybody want to say something? Um, I see I missed a few. Let's see. Dante has people blame Dre for Kanan and Tariq, but if you reflect back, Dre had to do that. Kanan was going to harm his family. Uh, okay. Now, it can be debated why he didn't trust Ghost enough to tell him no. Exactly. You you answered it, what I was going to say. Yeah, Kanan threatened to harm his family. So what? He thought Ghost wasn't strong enough to take Kanan out and protect his family or help him. Basically. Which was crazy. But yeah, I did forget he did have his daughter. So, but Dre, yeah, he just made a series of bad decisions throughout the whole thing. Like Ghost said, you could have been one. Could have been the man, but you blew it. <laughs> and ain't that the truth? After they let him live and survive, I don't know how many times when he should have died. Uh, let's see, druggy. Then Shine got killed. His then his dad left. The Dre baby sat sat him, and Kanan almost blew his head. <laughs> What's crazy is he don't even know how close he was to death on that couch. He really doesn't. And then he over here giving all this loyalty and support to somebody that was about to blow his brains out. Crazy. Talking and grubbing. Tasha wasn't doing her job as a mother. I, that's true. A lot of people dropped the ball. 
Kev. Nah, Tariq was never gangsta. Bottom line, Raina got more heart than he does. <laughs> she did stand up to dude, but I think that was a little bit of naivete. She didn't know what the hell she was doing. But, nah, he was never gangster. I agree, Kev. Um, Ama Harry, what's up? How you doing, Ama? Thanks for the comments and stopping by. Druggy Isaiah, Tariq parents aren't doctors and lawyers. They're killers and drug dealers. Yeah, but they hid that from him. He didn't know what the hell they did. He thought that his dad was a business owner. He even came to the school to speak on career day. He didn't know what the hell they was doing until Canaan told him. Dantes, you say died, ghost died saving Tariq, worthless ass, <laughs> talking and grubbing at druggy. They are kids whose parents are drug dealers that never get into that lifestyle. Raina didn't have a desire to get into that life. That's true. That's a good point. Donovan was an incorruptible fed. Yeah, ain't no need for a Dre to had to kill him. That was stupid. Yeah. They wasted the plot making Effie be and his daughter. That would have been interesting. Mr. Thorne, what's up, brother? Long time no see. How you been? Thanks for stopping by. Druggy at Talking and Grubbing. There's other factors that play into Tariq's transformation. Yeah, but those are some of the main ones. Dante's Kana had me dying when he told Dre. It's good she don't have your nose. Ha! <laughs> yeah. I was dying too. You know I was dying. She about to have that little snuffle up against. He wanted to pass that down, boys. He was going to be in trouble. Trouble. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm about to get ready to get out of here. Uh, I'll do a couple impressions before I go. I'll do Tommy. Hey. You all don't want to watch uh, my book three? Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to cancel Christmas on your head, all right? You don't want to watch my story? I'm going to make a story out of you. Front page news. <laughs> uh, Angie. They needed to do a spin-off on me. They wanted to see what I do. They cut the man that with me and yours. We go away and we live forever and we do it. And we live happy ever after. But no, they don't do it. So screw you. I gonna make my own show. I gonna be on the new show, okay? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Fudgy Babe, you want me to do, uh, what? Um, <laughs> Cookie from Empire? Look here, Lucian. I'm trying to make sure we gonna have this boy going right. And you ain't in here doing what you need to do. I'm sitting here trying to take over the empire and make sure that Becky don't eat all the hors d'oeuvres. But you ain't no help, deuces. Look here, Mike. I'm trying to run this empire, Mike. I'm trying to make sure that everybody is taken care of, Mike. It ain't easy. But I'm gonna do it because I'm the empire king. All right, Mike? Nah. We gonna finish these last episodes, Mike, and we gonna go off with a bang. Or better yet, a boom. <laughs> Let's see. Fudgy Babe, you just wrote cookie. I knew you was gonna wanna see that cookie. <laughs> I knew you wanted to see them that cookie. You think that fun and you that you gonna make fun of me, girl? I, Miss Cookie don't play that, okay? It's gonna be my new rebirth, my new beginning, Miss Cookie. And y'all better watch out, cause I don't play, okay? I done already got rid of one little Peggy, little Stubby, Lucy's. I get rid of the rest of y'all at no problem, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me get some water for this one. This one goes deep on my throat. I do, uh, <clears throat> I do, uh, <clears throat> Tony Teresi. <clears throat> 
Hey, look here, Tommy. We need to go ahead and put together an organization and take out the other Italians. And that way we run everything, Tommy. Trust me, I'm bad. I want to bounce you on my knee. Now, you want to have a daddy daycare time? Follow the rules, Tommy. <laughs> Support game and do one for Cookie is arguing with Ghost Satoshi arguing with Lucius. <laughs> Alright, let's see. <clears throat> Damn, Lucius. I'm trying to get out the game, Lucius. And you sitting here trying to make things worse. You got all this news, all these damn bodies popping up all over the place, Lucius. What's the problem? Why you can't keep your old things together? Hey, look here, Mike. All right, you don't question me, Mike. I'm the king of this empire. I run it the way I want to run it. You don't get into my business because all you have is truth. And the truth is, it's a lie, Mike. It's all a lie. You don't want none of this. Me and my girl, she got my back. Okay? That right, you know I do. I got you right here, little Peggy. And who wants some? I know Tasha's little ass don't want none. I will beat her little ass. You already see it. Half her head is already starting in the back. I just pulled the rest of it off, okay? I don't got no problem. I done did 17 years. I'll do a few more, alright? <laughs> Sweet brown sugar. Oh, I miss your power reviews. <laughs> Well, that's why y'all gotta watch the other stuff, because I still try to do impersonations, uh, jokes, and so you may find somebody else that I may be doing, and it may be funny. Just like I did Tiger King. Alright, now this here is Joe Exotic. Alright, now Carol Baskin, that bitch. Alright, Carol Baskin. She's the only one that wants to have a tiger. I don't believe that. Alright, I am the Tiger King. Did you hear my new LP? My new single? I saw a tiger. And the tiger saw a man. Coming soon to a radio station near you. I'm Joe Exotic. And I'm running for president. <laughs> Joe Exotic. Or Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Get her done. <laughs> Oh man, they done ate that food faster than the fat folks at the buffet line. <laughs> they tore that up. Well, they don't know. I got this car with a little deceptive speed in the back. A little turbo boost. <laughs> they don't know what he <laughs> All right, y'all. I think I covered the request gave a little extra <laughs> I'm glad you had a good laugh fudgy babe I appreciate it I love you guys you guys are great I may not have that many subscribers as other people but you guys are very supportive and I appreciate you guys all of you whether you sending money super chat or just watching the videos and comment or like or whatever the case everybody got a part and I appreciate you all and I'm thankful. I'm getting ready to sign out of here. And uh, I'll catch y'all next week. I'm going to try to do a bunch more podcasts. Crank out some more. The more that I do it, the more I get familiar with it. And uh, I got a couple other ideas in the works. So I'm just trying to expand. Trying to keep it going. Like I tell my son, you never stop learning. Never stop evolving. Never stop growing. As long as you're alive, you can you can try to do a little better or learn something new. So, I got a lot of things uh, going against me, but at the end of the day, since I'm still here, I try to make something of it. And, uh, you know, that's all I say. I think we all can do that. Um, you know... I appreciate y'all, and uh, I'll see y'all next week. I'm out of here. Peace, and thanks for all the support. <laughs>